Hello, we're here at the K-State Beef Stocker Unit to look at how prescribed burning affects tick populations on pasture. This study is looking at how prescribed burning in the spring, the summer or the fall affects our tick populations. We're looking at the different types of ticks that we have, but also how many of these ticks we have. So what we've been doing is every two weeks we come out here and we do a tick drag and we set a trap and we find how many ticks we have on pastures that have either been unburnt for the past four years, burnt in the spring, burnt in the late summer or burnt in the early fall. It's really important to do this kind of study because most farmers do some form of prescribed burning and so what we really are trying to do is figure out what time of the year is most effective in controlling your tick populations. We really worry about ticks because they're external parasites, they consume blood of the animals so you can have reduced production, but mainly they transmit some norm, very, very um, dangerous pathogens like Anaplasma marginale. Early results, we're looking at the first few months of this study, it seems that burning definitely impacts your overall tick population. We're seeing significantly fewer ticks in pastures that are burnt irrespective of season. Big difference there, so burning definitely does impact your tick populations. Right now, our early season data is suggesting that spring burning might be the most effective time in terms of reducing that tick population. The most important thing to remember is that ticks don't move. Unlike our flies, which can fly and move to a new place, where a tick falls off an animal is usually about the area that it will stay. So the most important thing with prescribed burning is making sure that you do a good burn. So anywhere under a tree, anywhere where there's a thicket, that is going to be a pocket where if it's not burned completely, ticks can reside there and animals tend to move into these areas because normally they're nice and shady and protected and that's where they're picking up ticks. So always make sure that you get a good burn that you're getting all the grass coverage taken care of. What we're doing when we're prescribed burning is we're actually changing the ecosystem quite a lot. So in addition to what this does to the ticks, we also wanted to see how does burning impact your hornfly populations and also our beneficials like our dung beetles. We don't want to be doing something to control our ticks and our hornflies that may be negatively impacting our dung beetle populations because they're really good ecosystem warriors. They take the manure and bury it underground which means that it does two important things. It removes a breeding habitat for our hornflies but also our gastrointestinal nematodes. They hatch out from the manure pads and they climb up on the grass. If that manure, is, and then they're consumed obviously by other animals. If that manure is buried, it disrupts that life cycle. So we really want to make sure that our dung beetles are not negatively impacted from the burning. And what we've actually found is that at least our early season counts are that the dung beetles, we have higher number of dung beetles in pastures that are burnt on the spring. So in a stocker type situation, this is just before animals go out onto pasture. When we look at our hornflies, it seems at least our early season data is suggesting that there are a lower number of hornflies on cattle that are grazed on pastures that are either burnt in the spring or in the fall. And this most likely has to do with the insect's life cycle. So hornflies have a period where they're dormant. So over winter, they rest just below the soil and they hang out until it gets warm enough for them to emerge again. If you're bring, burning in the spring and the fall, you're targeting that overwintering period. And that's why we think that those two seasons, at least early on, showed the, the, the most impact in terms of reducing the number of flies. 